Hello crochet friends, it's Chris here of Light and Joy Designs. Welcome back to the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the crazy sweater. It uses simple crochet stitches and you will create it in a size that fits you perfectly. Let's take a look at how we get started. Okay, so the materials for the crazy sweater, uh, depending upon the size that you're going to make, uh, you'll need somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 yards of worsted weight yarn. Um, this project though, because it is a recipe project, you could make it in any weight yarn that you would like. Um, and you'll just need to adjust the amount of yardage uh, depending on uh, the weight yarn that you're using. So, but I'm using a, a worsted weight yarn Roll With It Melange by Red Heart in the colorway Curtain Call. And um, this is 389 yards, so I'm probably gonna use about four of these. Um, and depending, I'm making about a size medium to large. So if you're making larger than that, you may need five or six. Um, you'll, you'll just have to kind of uh, uh, see how that goes for your sizing. Uh, you're also going to need a measuring tape. A, I'm use a, a crochet hook. I'm using 6.5 millimeter with this worsted weight yarn. You'll need a sewing needle, a scissors, and then some paper and a pen for just some, uh, you know, any calculations that we might be doing. So let's take a look at the, uh, the overview of this sweater. Okay, so we're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter hook and long stranded color change yarn. Uh, and I'm using the Red Heart Roll With It Melange in the colorway Curtain Call. And you're probably going to need approximately anywhere from 1100 to say 1500 yards or more depending on the size that you're making. In this pattern we use something called the alternate double crochet and I'll show you how that works uh, and they're going to be in the in the back loop only that's the stitch we're going to be using mostly we will be using some half double crochet in the back loop only we'll be using some single crochet and some slip stitch as well so the way this pattern is going to work is I'm going to use the term double crochet um, but just understand that most of the time it's going to be in the back loop only. Um, okay so we oh and actually also for the cuffs we will be using um, front post double crochets and back post double crochets. That'll be for the cuff, the neck, and also the uh, the waist, the waistline. Okay, so the way that this uh, project works is we're going to be making a yoke first in the round, and there will be increases on every other row. So the way the increases are going to work is we're going to start with. Um, I'm going to start with row one. It's going to be all double crochets. Row two will be an increase row. It'll go double crochet, increase, double crochet, increase, double crochet, increase. Row three will be no increase. 
just a double crochet in each one. Row four will be an increase row. We'll go double crochet twice, increase, double crochet twice, increase, double crochet twice, increase. Row five will be no increase, just a double crochet in each double crochet. And row six will be double crochet three times, increase, double crochet three times, increase, double crochet three times, increase, and so on. And so you'll work in this pattern for your increases of the beginning of your yoke. Then at some stage, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the zigzags. Uh, for, your, for your increases in the zigzag part, you'll want to keep track of what row you're on. And probably the best way to do that is to just have, you know, a piece of paper where you have your rows listed and you just check them off as you go. Um, and so, for instance, like, let's say this last row here in the pink was um, not an increase row. So then that means that this row here is going to be an increase row where you're going to have these increases. This next row is going to be not an increase row and then this row will be an increase row and you're going to be using this formula. So your increases will be happening less and less frequently. You know, by row seven, eight, you'll be doing four double crochets and then an increase, four double crochets and an increase. So then when you come to this line here, you're gonna make your decision about whether it's an increase row or not by, take, by starting from this row here. So. We said this was not an increase row, so this one will be an increase row. This one will not be an increase row, and then this one will be an increase row. And it will be, you'll just count the rows, you know, you'll decide what number of increases depending on just counting your rows from, you know, the center out. Okay, so these are the measurements you will need to make. So on a piece of paper, you're going to um, write down these measurements here, these titles, and you're going to take the measurements um, using your measuring tape. So the reason why you want to know the circumference of your head is because that is going to tell you um, how big the smallest your neck piece can be. So for me, that's uh, about 22 and a half inches. So that means that my neck opening needs to be about that amount as well. Okay, that's kind of my minimum amount. Then you're gonna to wanna to know your largest circumference. So for some people, that's going to be at the chest. For some people, it's going to be in the midsection. And for some people, it's going to be at the hips. So, um, and it also depends on how, um, what length you want your sweater to go to. So let's say you had larger hips, but you were only going to have the sweater go to um, the top of your hips. <clears throat> then you would use the largest measurement, either your chest or your midsection. If you're having it go down to your hips, then the sweater will need to um, be wide enough for your hips. So <clears throat> you'll want to decide that first, um, where you want the sweater to fall. <clears throat> and you can measure that. For me, that measurement is, I'm going to have mine go to 
kind of the middle of my hips. So that'll be about 20, let's just call it about 23 inches. Um, and my, my widest circumference is about 42 inches. And that's, yeah, that's with a little bit of ease anyways. <clears throat> um, then you're going to want to know the distance from your shoulder to where your armpit starts. This is the armpit depth. And for me, that is about nine inches. So from here to here, uh, then you're also going to want to know your upper arm circumference. And for me, that is about 14 inches. And lower arm for me let's say a comfortable and you know for my lower arm I'm going to measure it kind of loosely so um, about I'm going to call it like eight inches would be the the smallest I would want my my lower arm of my sweater to be eight inches around all right so you're going to do all those measurements and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next with those measurements Okay, so we're back to our yoke. And so you know this uh, measurement here, the armpit depth? This is, this is the measurement that's going to, where we're going to know when we're done with our, our yoke. So when the yoke measures from the shoulder to where your arm, to where your armpit will be, that is going to be where you will um, stop making the yoke, okay? And then the other thing you're going to need to measure is, um, so the entire yoke is going to need to add up to your largest circumference. Okay, so let's write this down here actually. So the, the entire yoke the entire circumference of your yoke, all right, this entire circumference here, when you're ready to begin dividing the, the yoke for making the body, um, needs to be your largest circumference. So in my case, it's going to be 42 inches plus um, my upper arm circumference, 14 inches times two, because remember I have two arms. All right. Um, and then you're going to want to add uh, possibly a little bit of, maybe a little bit of ease to some of these numbers. So for the, um, for this one, I'm probably going to add let's say five inches. So I'm going to call this uh, 47. I'm going to add five inches of ease. This is ease. This is what's going to make the sweater um, a little bit more casual. Now, if you want yours to be more fitted, you can, you don't have to add ease. And, and you know, as long as you know your yarn is 
stretchy enough that you'll be able to get into it. <laughs> okay, um, and then for my arms, I'm probably going to want to add, um, I'm probably going to want to add like maybe one to two inches to here. So um, I'm going to call it two inches. So I'm going to say plus 16 inches and plus 16 inches. All right. So then that total is going to be 32 plus 47 is 9. So 79 inches. So I'm going to I'm going to work my yoke until all the way around is 79 inches or let's just call it 80 inches to be to make it easy. Um, and that'll mean that it'll be, if you measure from here to here, that'll be 40 inches. Or if you measure all the way around, that'll be 80 inches. Then what you're going to do is, um, now let's say, let's say you got to here um, and you're going to need more for the body. Like let's say, let's say you your depth, your armpit depth, from here to here. You've got your uh, nine inches, and I'm probably gonna add some ease to that too. I'm probably gonna add maybe like, I don't know, a half an inch or so, or maybe one inch, somewhere, I'm gonna go somewhere between nine and a half and 10 inches for mine, for my armpit depth here. Um, So let me get another piece of paper here. Okay, so let's say that this measurement from here to here, where your armpit is going to be, uh, you've, you're at the right measurement here, but you're going to need more for your body. Uh, let's say this measure is only 37 inches. You can add it, you can add the extra space by we'll be at we can add some chains underneath the armpits and that will extend the size of the body and the size of the arms as well. Um, if you're exactly right at, at the size that you need, the 40, in, like in my case, 40 inches, then when we fold this in half, this spot right here and the corresponding spot on the back will just be uh, joined together exactly. So let me draw a picture of that. So the main factor determining uh, when you're going to stop is this measurement from the shoulder to where the armpit depth is. And if you need a little bit more space, a, lo a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more length around your circumference. You can always do just one more row all the way around the entire thing. And then if you have the right amount, you'll be able to join this spot with the corresponding spot on the other side and this spot with the corresponding spot on the other side. And then what we'll end up doing is making the body and the arms off from these spots here. Once we get to, once we've connected these, I'm going to show you how to do this, but basically what we're going to do is we will start off with um, you know, one round of going around and then we'll go right into our, um, our zigzags again. Okay. And then we come back around like this, like this, and like this. And then you might have one round where you go all the way around and then you come 
Maybe you have some rounds that come like this. And then we have a round that goes all the way around like that. So it's, it's definitely a free form kind of a sweater. And then you come, you'll go with this one all the way back around like this. And then you'll come like this. And then go all the way around. And so on. You keep working in this way until you have the length that you want with your sweater. And then um, for the arms, we will come back here and we will start working in the round. And actually, um, we'll probably, if you're working with uh, multiple, with more than one color yarn, uh, you can work this in um, spiral. So it just keeps going all the way down. That makes it really easy. There's no, um, there's no like seam where the, the rounds begin and end. All right, so let's take a look at starting this. Again, I'm going to make a slip knot. This is my tail end. This is my working end. I just fold that over and pull a loop up through that. And that's my slip knot. Now you can start by making a chain of the length that you want your neckline to be. Um, but I'm going to start, I'm going to make this using a foundation double crochet because then I will know for sure the length of my neck opening. Um, sometimes when you start with a chain and then you make your stitches into those chains, sometimes the measurement can be a little bit different. Not that different, but uh, okay, so it's just a different way to do it. So I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to go in, I'm going to yarn over as if to do a double crochet. I'm going to go into the first chain that I made. Yarn over, pull through a loop. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one. That makes my that makes my foundation chain. Now I'm going to make the double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. <clears throat> so then to make the next one, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into that V right there, into that foundation chain that I made. <clears throat> Yarn over, pull through a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. That's the foundation chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And again, yarn over, go through the foundation chain that I made. Yarn over, pull through a loop. Yarn over, pull through one to make that foundation chain. And then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two to make the double crochet. So I'm just going to do that until I have the length that I want for my neckline. Okay, so my my piece measures 22 inches. That's how the size of uh, the neck opening that I want for mine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect this stitch. I'm going to come to my beginning and I'm going to connect it to this first stitch here. I'm going to go under those two loops. I'm going to yarn over and do a slip stitch to join. And I'm just going to chain a couple here because what I'm going to do right now, you can do this later, but I, I like to get this out of the way right away, is I'm going to connect these two bottom stitches together 
with my yarn needle. I'm just going to go into this bottom stitch here and just go around a couple of times to secure that. And then um, I'll just kind of sew that in. So now we can begin our next round. Okay, so we have round one, round one completed. That was just double crochets. Now we're going to begin working an increase row where we increase with a V stitch every other stitch. And we're gonna be working into the back loop only and we're gonna be using alternate double crochets um, and they're also known as extended half double crochet. It's the same stitch. So we're going to chain two. This is not, that does not count as a stitch. That's just to get us up to the height of our first stitch. We're going to yarn over and in the back of all of these double crochets you can see there's this third, third strand right there. It's right behind the V's. These are the V's. That's where we would normally go into. So you're just going to go into that strand right there. So yarn over and I'm going to go in there. This will be easier on the next row because of the extended double crochets. So that's one. And there's my second one, so now I'm going to do two into that stitch. Okay, the next stitch is going to be just one stitch. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do two. One, two. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do one. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do two. And I'm going to do that all the way around to the end. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is that um, if you mess up on one of your increases, you forget one, it's really going to be okay because um, this pattern, it doesn't matter if you have odd or even number of stitches. We can, we'll fix that at the end of the yoke. If you're not at an even amount, we can just add one more stitch. So, uh, you know, don't worry too much if your increases are not perfect. Okay, so I'm on my last stitch, which is just going to happen to be a double stitch. So here's that last stitch, and there's the third loop. And like I said, these are going to be easier to get into on the next row. So my extended double, sorry, extended half double or alternate double crochet. And then I'm going to join to this first double crochet here. Um, let me explain how I do that. So I'm going to go under that first V of the first 
double crochet, yarn over, pull through a loop, and then yarn, uh, not yarn over, but just pull through that loop, through the loop that's on my hook. Okay, and so now you can see the, the yoke is starting to form. Now the next row is going to be row three, and that's going to be no increases. So just you're going to work, um, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then in each stitch you're going to go into this, into this back loop right here. Okay, so you've got, you've got these V's all along the top. And then if you just turn it ever so slightly, you can see there is, there's another third strand. The first one is right there. A little bit hard to see in this light, but. Um, so we're not gonna have any increases, so we're just going to yarn over, go into that third strand yarn over, pull through a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. And you can see what's happening is we're getting this nice, um, this chain look where it's almost like a knitted look that's gonna accentuate our stripes in this pattern. That's why we work into that back loop. So just continue with those alternate double crochets. Let me just show it to you up close again. Here's those, those V's that we normally go under. If you just turn it a little bit to the side, you can see the third strand right there. And that's where you go in, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three. So just do that all the way around with no increases and I'll meet you back here. So here's my third round completed. And you can see these nice accentuated stripes showing up as we, as we do this. So for this round, to start row four, um, this is going to be an increase row, so we're going to do two double crochets, then an increase, a V-stitch, two double crochets, V-stitch, and so on. So let's join this, uh, finish up the third round here, go into that first stitch of this round, yarn over, pull through a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. All right, so now we're going to chain two, one, two, and working into the back loop, I'm going to make my first <clears throat> extended half double crochet or alternate double crochet. I'm going to make one in the next one. Remember we're working in these back loops. And then in the next one I'm going to make two. So one, two. So then I'm going to do one, and one, and then I'm going to make two. One, two. And I find that if I just kind of have that as like a little song in my head as I go along, helps me to stay on track. So I go one, one, and then we're gonna do two. One, two, and so on. One, 
one, and then two. One, two. So just keep going all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. All right, so I just did my last two. And if you don't end on a double, it's okay. It doesn't matter if you end on a single or a double. So for our next row, we just did row four. We're gonna do row five, which is no increase. So we're gonna to go to that first stitch right there and, oops, wait a second, right here. And yarn over, pull through a loop and pull it through the loop on your hook. Chain two, again, doesn't count as a stitch. And then we're gonna go into the first stitch right there, that back loop, and make our first extended double crochet, or half double crochet, or it's also known as the alternate double crochet. So for each stitch, we're just gonna go around and work one stitch into each one. So I'll just, I'll show you again a little slower. There's our V's in the front, and then you flip it up and you can see that third um, thread in the back. We yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three. So it's just a little different from the regular double crochet. And the reason why we use it is because it makes this really nice um, accessible third thread in the back. Makes it really easy to get into. And the reason why we are doing that is so that we get this nice accentuated um, effect on our striping. All right, so just work that row all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I'm at the end of row five and I'm going to connect to my first stitch here. Yarn over, pull through a loop and pull that loop through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to start row six. With row six, our increases are gonna come less frequently. We're gonna do three single double crochets and then a V stitch, an increase. So we start out with the same as usual. We're going to chain two. And then in that very first stitch, we're gonna go into the back loop and do our first Alternate double crochet, oops. Okay, so that was pull through one and now pull through three. So that's one, two, three. And now I'm going to do my increase. One, two. So that's kind of how I'm going to count it out. I'm going to count one, two, three, one, two, three. Now an increase. So one and two. So you'll just do that all the way around. And if you ever lose track, you can just go back to wherever your last double was. You can see it. And then start counting. One, two, three, double. Okay, so I know where I am. Now I'm going to do three individual of these alternate double crochets, also known as 
that's two. Also known as extended half double crochets. So that was one, two, three, and now I do an increase. All right, so just go ahead and do that row six all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. So I'm at the end of row six here. I'm going to connect to this first stitch here. Slip stitch it to the first stitch. I'm just going to chain one, two, pull that through because I just want to take a look at what I have so far to decide what I'm going to do next. So I've got my yoke folded in half and I'm going to I'm going to measure it now. See where we're at. So I've got 6 rows and I've got uh, about 3 and a half inches. So if I do another row, a row 7, I'll be at about 4 inches. And I want my I'm going to want to stop my yoke when I am about here, about nine inches from the top. So um, that will probably be another um, that will probably be another like maybe eight to ten rows. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to do I'm going to do a seventh row and then I'm going to start my zigzags. So and with this pattern you can start your zigzags anytime you want. Um, and uh, or you can just follow along with how I'm doing it. So for row seven it's just going to be a row of no increases. So if we were to add a row seven here, it's just going to be just all double crochets in each one. All right, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll uh, take a look at beginning our zigzags. Okay, I'm at the end of my seventh row and I'm going to do some measurements here. So this is this is about where my shoulder is going to be and I'm going to want this to be um, about nine. I just tested it on a on another sweater so I probably want to be at actually maybe more like around eight and a half between eight and a half or nine for mine. So this is my spot right here. So I'm just going to make a little dot right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to go to the first row here. And I can see that I've at uh, seven rows I have four inches. And I want to be about here. So that's another... Um, that's another three to four inches. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my, um, actually, so this is seven rows and, and for my, <clears throat> uh, for my zigzags, I'm going to have three rows on each side. Um, plus maybe like a one row between them that goes all the way around and maybe one row afterwards. So that will be a total of four plus two, another six rows. So that's probably going to get me right to there because seven rows gets me four inches. Six rows will get me to about right there. So I'm ready to start my zigzags. Okay, so for beginning the um, the zigzags. You're going to want your your row, sorry, the place where your rows meet in the back and you're going to want it in the center. And then you're going to want to just fold it in half 
and you're going to put a stitch marker in the center stitch on the front and we don't really need it right now but I'll just put it there the center stitch in the back we're going to move these as we go and what we're going to do is for the first round I'm going to fold this this way now we're going to work our way let's see okay yeah we're going to be going this way because we're going to we're going to start up and go this way so we're going to work one row that goes from here to here and then we're going to slip stitch back um, well you'll see it's we're going to taper it off we we go to about um, one two three three slip stitches three single crochets three half double crochets uh, so it's about you work to about here to about nine stitches from the stitch marker and we're going to taper down and then we're going to slip stitch back to that point and then we're going to come back to this side to about the same place on this side as we are on this side so we'll move our stitch markers up then we'll come back uh, to about nine stitches from our last place and then and then back and then what we'll do is we'll come around one whole time and we're going to keep working our increases according to the schedule so our next row is going to be an increase row so as we're doing it we're going to increase um, it's going to be our row eight so we're going to increase every four stitches so row eight goes four double crochets then an increase four double crochets and then an increase and so on all right so let's take a look at that so here's where i joined my row seven and again for you you might be um, you might work more rows than this and this this is a, a recipe this is um, it doesn't have to be exact it's going to be it's going to be a handmade sweater it's going to it's going to have kind of a a funky look to it so you're not going to have to worry about it being perfect okay so I'm going to start this row with a tape with a tapered. So I'm going to um, I'm going to start with some slip stitches. So I'm going to go into that back loop right here. And I'm going to do three slip stitches. One, two, three. Then I'm going to do three single crochets. Let me just come down a little closer here. Still working into the back loop. Single crochet, we just insert into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through two loops go into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and we'll do one more single crochet all right now we're going to do three half double crochets yarn over go into that back loop only three loops on the hook yarn over pull through all three do that two more times half double crochet in that back loop okay and now we're ready to begin our our regular alternate 
double crochet. So, and I'm going to do my increases. So I didn't do any increases here in this, this beginning here. So I'll do my first increase on that first stitch. So one, two. So now I'm going to do four, one, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to do an increase in the next stitch. One, and two into that same back loop. Okay, so I'm going to continue with that, that pattern. And over here, I'm going to take my other stitch marker and I'm going to count out one, two, three stitches for my slip stitch, one, two, three stitches for my single crochets, one, two, three stitches for my half double crochets. So I know that when I get to this stitch here, I'm going to begin my tapering of this row. So just can, you can do the same thing and um, I'll meet you when I get over here. Okay. So I'm still here on row eight of uh, my, my zigzag, the first row of my zigzag. You can see I tapered it, came all the way around. Now I'm here with the last nine stitches. Um, I did one extra increase here at the end so that, um, because I'm not increasing on any of these stitches here. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did in the beginning, which is to taper. I'm just going to do three half double crochets. And again, all of these are in the back loop. So that's one, two, three. And you know, you could do a, um, an increase in here as well uh, if you need it, but it's, it's probably going to be okay without it. And now uh, three single crochets, one, two, three, and then I'm just going to do three slip stitches, one, two, and three. Okay, so now we're going to come back this way, the same way that we came. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch to, let's see here, um, I'm going to slip stitch six stitches. Okay, so I'm going to turn my work. And uh, let's see here, we're going to go into these, um, these back loops here. So I'm going to start on, I'm just going to start on the second one here. One, two, three. four, five, and six. And now I'm going to do my single crochets. And since we are on, so now we're on the, the whole time we've been working just on one side. 
and so and we were always going into the back loop but now that we're working now that we've turned our work we're going to be working into the front loops um, for our stitches so I did my six slip stitches now I'm going to do three single crochets one in the front loops two three now I'm going to do th three half double crochets. One, two, and three. And now I'm going to start with my um, alternate double crochets in the front loop. And this is a non-increasing row, so I don't have to worry about increases. And I'm just going to go in this way, all the way to, I'm going to come back to where I started and I'm going to count out um, six stitches. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is where I want my stitches on this next row to end. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to count out nine stitches of where I'm going to begin my tapering down. So that was six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is like, you don't have to worry so much about precision. It's just kind of an approximation. So, so I'm going to work all the way around till I get to this stitch and then I'm going to do my uh, my tapering with the half double single crochet and slip stitches to here. Alright, so go ahead and work around in the same way that I was just doing before in the front loop doing your extended double, sorry, extended half double crochets or they're also known as alternate double crochets. Okay, so I've just been working around this way for the, th the second row of this uh, zigzag section. And I'm about to start to do the tapering. So let's come down for that. So the next, um, the next three stitches are going to be half double crochets. So yarn over, go into that front loop, yarn over, pull through a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. We do two more of those. Then we're going to do three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then we're going to do our three slip stitches. So one, two, three. Now we're going to turn our work and we are going to plot out our next row. So let me zoom out here before we do that and show you where we're going to go next. So from here I'm going to slip stitch back six stitches and then do the the taper the taper again in the reverse order. 
and then we're going to come around to this side and we want to come to the place where this stopped and we're going to count back uh, let's see here six stitches so one two three four five six that will be where this next row ends and we're going to count up nine stitches for where we're going to taper off on it so one two three four five six seven eight nine Okay, so now I'm going to zoom back in here and now we're back on our, our right side. So we're going to be going back to working in the back loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yarn and bring it behind before I begin and uh, for these ones I'm just going to go into the the back loop on these here one two and three and we're going to do three single crochets one And I'm going to start working into, um, there's a little bit of a, a back loop here that I can work into, so I'm going to work into that. So I did one, two, three. Let's see. One. And it doesn't have to be exact, so. All right to the next one. Getting these little back loops can be a little um, challenging, but you don't have to do this that often, so it's not that, it's not that bad. And then the reason why it's, it's worth the effort is so that you can get these, these V's to show up on this side. So that's two, and then this is three. Now we're going to do our half double crochets. Okay, so now we have you can see here we have, it's a, it's a slightly different look than on the other side, but you can see we have our V's on this side. So there's a V and we're going to go into this third loop here in the back for our, the, the rest of our stitches. So for the next one, we go in here. We're going to do three half double crochets. And this is an increase uh, row. So I'm going to start off my first double crochet with an increase. Since we, um, since we missed doing one during this taper portion here. Okay, so for this increase row, we are at Row, let's count our rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're on the tenth one. And for that one, it's going to be um, five double crochets and then an increase. That's going to be the repeat. So I just did one increase there. So I'm going to do five of these alternate double crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, 
five. Let me just pull up my yarn here. It's and then we're gonna do a, an increase. Again, working all of these into the back loop. So that's one and two into the same stitch, into that back loop. Okay, so you're just gonna keep working that way all the way around, five double crochets and then an increased stitch until you get to your first stitch marker where we will begin our tapering down again. Okay, so here I am at the end of row 10, coming towards the end. This is where I'm gonna do my taper between these two stitch markers. So now I'm going to do three half double crochets in the back loop, two, three, now three single crochets, one, two, three, and now three slip stitches, one, two, three. All right, so let's zoom out and see what we have here. So you can see my yoke, it was circular, and now it's starting to get a little bit uh, oblong shaped, a little egg shaped. So now we're going to, um, oops, pull that out. Okay, so let me just turn this around and show you what we have here so far. So this is our first little zigzag section here, and it's the same on the front as on the back. You can see how the rows get abbreviated. Make sure I don't lose that little loop there. Okay, and I'm gonna show you on paper first what we're gonna do next. 